Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Director Young, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, as you know, despite all the recent rain in the state of California and uh, other uh, areas of the West, we still face a crisis on the Colorado River as drying conditions bring water reservoirs along the Colorado River to dangerously low levels. That means that 40 million Americans and farms across seven states face severe threats to their water supply. And uh, just to drive home the point, when I reference the farms in the West, I'm speaking to uh, a key segment of our nation's food supply. So I want to first thank you for OMB's role in facilitating the administration's commitment to invest $250 million from the Inflation Reduction Act to address the public health and environmental disasters at the Salton Sea. Now, because of drought conditions, changing agricultural practices, and efforts to stabilize the Colorado River Basin, more and more of the lake bed of the Salton Sea is exposed due to decreased flows, which causes toxic clouds of dust and pesticides, and this pollution spreads uh, for miles, uh, air, goes airborne for miles. Addressing the Salton Sea is a critical linchpin of securing long-term deals to address water use in the Colorado River Basin. Second, the $4 billion included in the Inflation Reduction Act for the Colorado River, I think, should be just seen as a down payment, given the magnitude of the crisis facing the seven states. It's going a long way. It was put to urgent good use, but it's a one-time investment in an ongoing concern. So my question is this. How is the OMB working with the Department of Interior, the Department of Agriculture, and other agencies to leverage Inflation Reduction Act and other funding as part of a whole-of-government approach to addressing the challenges facing the Colorado River? Well, one, we understand the problem. Uh, the Colorado River Basin impacts 40 million uh, Americans, seven states. It is a complex problem, uh, and it will take a whole-of-government approach. And OMB is uh, situated... Uh, to be able to bring the various agencies together and make sure uh, that we are putting our best minds and, and creativeness uh, to this problem. As you pointed out, this, is, this needs to be reimagined uh, for the, the long term. Um, and we appreciate the infrastructure and the IRA funds. Um, they're helping get us started. And without those, I don't know where we would be. Um, but this has to be a long uh, systemic change in how the government uh, views the Colorado River, uh, Colorado River Basin. And um, we're committed to doing that with your partnership. Thank you. I'll tell you where we would be without these investments. We'd be in dire straits. <laughs> That's exactly where we would be. Um, and, and another uh, data point to underscore, half of the 40 million Americans who rely on the Colorado River are in California. So. Uh, uh, on a related issue, Director Young, during your confirmation hearing, which probably at this point seems like a decade ago to you, um, I raised an issue of a specific Army Corps project to improve levees along the Pajaro River near Watsonville, California. I raised it then as an issue of equity. The Pajaro River project was long overlooked because it would protect a low-income community with low property values. Now, it may or may not have been a conscious ignoring of that low income community, but my point is the, the systemic consideration of these factors by the Army Corps of Engineer. Their rigid benefit cost ratio formula systemically disadvantages projects that would protect communities like this one. So I was proud to help secure $82 million in the bipartisan infrastructure law to begin the project to reinforce the levees in this historically underserved and largely farm worker community of Pajaro, California. And unfortunately, I imagine you've seen the images for days now, uh, Mother Nature did not wait for the Corps to complete its work. This past week, the levee broke, 
flooding the town and displacing hundreds of households. And many of the residents are now out of work long term because nearby fields remain underwater. And these families won't be able to return to their homes probably for months. Director Young, you and I have talked about the need to address how the Army Corps, as well as OMB, should be thinking beyond just the benefit-cost ratio in order to ensure we're protecting vulnerable communities equitably. How can we shift the federal government's approach to ensure that communities like Pajaro and Watsonville receive the resources they need before it's too late? Yeah, well, one... You're talking to a child of South Louisiana. I pulled out more drywall um, than a human should have to, and it's devastating to families uh, and communities. Uh, and those communities are more than a benefit-cost ratio. Um, and you have my commitment to work with you um, in Congress to make sure there is change beyond when I'm in the seat uh, to make sure that uh, we're looking at a way to be absolutely cost-conscious because uh, there's never enough money, even with the infrastructure law. Um, lots of communities have uh, flood control projects that we can't get to. Um, so we do have to be cost effective. Um, but this idea that poor communities uh, don't deserve the same flood control protection uh, as those with higher, uh, higher value in houses uh, is just patently unfair. So I'm sorry we got there too late uh, to those communities. Um, but, uh, you know, I certainly want to work with you and see what uh, we can do to systemically uh, change this for the future. Okay. Senator thank Lee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair.